Hi, my name is Zainab Hijazi. I am the mental health and psychosocial support specialist working within the Child Protection and Emergencies Unit in here in New York. The community-based and MHPSS guidelines draw and align with the ISC mental health and psychosocial support in emergencies guidelines. And the IC guidelines define mental health and psychosocial support as any local or external support that promotes or protects the well-being of children, families, or individuals, and or prevents and supports persons with mental health disorders. When we think about MHPSS, we often think it's specifically linked to mental disorders. It is actually about what makes us well. The well-being of children really depends on a, an interplay between the social, the psychological, the spiritual, all these different elements really contribute to the, a child's well-being. And a child's well-being is not only defined by the support that is within the child, it's highly dependent on strengthening the circles of support around that child. So it's essential that we're talking about and engaging caregivers and families who are the support mechanism for children, both in emergency settings, but also in normal settings. When we talk about mental health, there's still this stigma that surrounds mental health. So how do we set up activities that are addressing the needs and the varying needs and complex needs of children and families who are affected by crises? in a way that is non-stigmatizing, in a way that is accessible, and in a way that really works to uh, build on the existing strengths within the community, whether it be through the schools, through the health sector, through primary health care, whether it's through establishing a safe space for communities to come together. But it's really important to understand that we need to think beyond working with a specific age group and rather think about how the well-being of a child is affected by the well-being of the caregivers and subsequently affected by the well-being of the community and how it's doing and how it's recovering following an emergency. You'll find within section two of the guidelines, we talk about understanding community-based MHPSS. And it's not just about laying out the interventions. Rather, we talk about the approach, the approach to carrying out those interventions in a way that strengthens natural supports and systems, in a way that addresses interventions at all layers of the ISC MHPSS pyramid, but also includes lay and professional services and psychological and social supports. So we're talking about interventions that addresses the entire spectrum of needs for children and families. We're talking about working at the level of children, caregivers and parents, families and communities. A lot of the times in some countries where specialists do exist, we often find that these specialized services are, are centralized and are un unaffordable, they're very expensive, and so there is this pressure to refer all cases that we see to specialized services. But we, we know that children and families are resilient, and sometimes they don't need more specialized support Rather, they need more focused support that we are able to provide through our existing programs, through people who are working on the ground, and through communities themselves by building capacities within that community. It lays out uh, recommended interventions that we know are evidence-based, that we know work. These different interventions can be carried out with children, with adolescents, with communities, with caregivers, with teachers. So we're looking at different entry points to carrying out mental health and psychosocial support interventions. And in the initial stages of the Syria crisis, a colleague of mine working with an international NGO voiced to me that CFS in itself had its limitations because it was providing the safe space, but within the community through, needs, through a needs assessment they were also identifying other needs within the community that either directly or indirectly had an impact on the well-being of children. And of course, they were in no position to make any diagnosis at the time, but they knew that the interventions that they had set up did not address these more complex symptoms and these more complex issues. 
And these guidelines would have been really useful for my colleague at the time because what they do is they lay out these types of interventions and links to those specific resources that can be utilized in these low resource and low capacity settings. So when there are no specialists, does that mean that we don't provide mental health services to those who might need more specialized support? No, it is important to acknowledge that whatever your resources, whatever capacities exist on the ground, there are ways in which we can begin to address the needs on the ground. There are resources available to us, as we know. There are interventions that we know have positive outcomes when it comes to providing that extra level of support that children and their caregivers sometimes need in order for them to be well.